Yes. Okay, we have one new question from Charlie Lim, uh, who asked you to do a little bit of historical comparison between how the media did under the pandemic between SARS and right now. How do you compare this media environment, you know, 17 years ago as opposed to now? Mm, I'm not. I'm not sure how much I can say about that. I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention that much to the media, to the media scape back seventeen something years ago. So I'm not really sure uh, what Were I can say. Were you in say China about, uh, seventeen years ago, Jesse? No, in SARS, I was still in in San Francisco. Um, I remember walking around in in Chinatown and seeing Chinese people wearing masks, which I thought was quite odd. Um, and now I. Think that's odd if I don't see somebody wearing a mask. So, um, but I mean, it, obviously there are the changes in, in having a lot more social media, um, but also there's the changes in the in the, um, the the virus and how it spreads, and it's a lot more uh, a lot more invasive than SARS is. So I think that's kind of the biggest the biggest difference is the disease itself. Um, and for the United States, at least, it's probably a bit more uh, the increased polarization in, in, in politics and media political polarization has increased a lot so um but it didn't really imp impact america that much so i can't, i'm not sure what i can say about that yeah. do you have any idea does anybody Maybe else need to, yeah right. does anybody else has more experience on that comparing you know what happened 17 years ago under sars and and the current media coverage under the COVID 19 could any panelists perhaps say one thing or two, if you want to? Yeah, Elga, you can speak something up on that, Elga. Because Elga, Hong yeah. Kong and Beijing. Uh. Yeah, Elga, want to say something? Uh, you turn, not turn on your microphone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as um, as uh, Jesse said a while ago, that uh, uh, SARS and uh, the COVID nineteen are not quite comparable because uh, uh, for the SARS, it only affected uh, mostly two places. One is Hong Kong and Beijing, and not even the whole China. Many, many, um, of course, Guangdong as well. But uh, for the rest of the country, uh, those are not much, those were not much uh, affected, and then. Uh, uh, I, I'm not quite sure what, what how it happened, or how it was covered in the U.S. and the rest of the world, but I, I don't think there were much uh, coverage on it. Uh, except, well, I mean, coverage on what happened in China, uh, yes, but not uh, on on the local uh, communities because uh, the virus uh, did not went, did not go that far in the first place. In the second place, is that. Um, uh, the SARS lasted for compar uh, uh, relatively a short period of time uh, as uh, not, uh, I mean, uh, the, the COVID-19 has been here for uh, almost half a year now. And um, from one place, first wave in China and the second wave in the rest of the world, Europe and the US as well. Yeah. So it's not quite comparable. And um, and of course, uh, in terms of the, the death tolls, um, well, it's uh, much much uh, more now than in the SARS. So it's um, it's well, I was, in a sense. Yeah. If I could say something, um, I, I was just thinking how in, a, in the the similarities are are a bit more interesting, I think, um, because. You know, journalists, they, they learn how to frame events by how events were framed previously, right? So when, when the COVID-19 first started to break out, the first thing that American and many Western journalists were thinking about is SARS. And the, all the early reports were framed from the perspective of, of what happened when, with SARS and saying, well, is there going to be a cover-up, right? Maybe with social media now that the information will flow more freely or something like that. And they had the same kind of framing as they did previously. So, you know, that's, that's one thing that I think is kind of, is kind of interesting. Right? 
Yes, uh, on on um, uh, comparison, like uh, in the first wave in the in the U.S., I think most of the people were uh, have the mindset that you know it has nothing to do with the U.S. or the rest of the world, except China. If they frame the news mm -hmm. as what it was as SARS, so including the whole way of how they treat it. I, I mean, the, the, the government was uh, there to uh, think of uh, policies, how to contain it or so, but they, they, are not, they are not paying much uh, or enough attention on it uh, because they frame it differently. And I think it'd be interesting. Uh, I probably don't have the expertise to do it, but I'm I'm certain that, um, and I might research this later on to compare how the media frames these kind of pandemics when they break out, depending on where it, it breaks out. So if it's the, you know the swine flu, which came from the United States, or Ebola, which came from here, or and when H1, you know, it, it, comparing how you know you know, the, the political, the economic, the, the development of a country and a disease breaks out there, how that, that, that affects how journalists frame it a lot more than, than many other things, right? Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's this unfair kind of, you know, the, the stereotypes that journalists have about different countries. And like I said, just this is the way that they always cover this kind of story. So when it, happens again they cover it in the same way right if it's a if it's a flood in new orleans it's like once in a lifetime thing and who knows but if it's a, a flood in 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 bangladesh it's like well that's a normal thing and they the journalists don't think it's that special right so if it's a disease breaking out in china they go oh just like sars right but it, you know so it, it's this that that tradition that habit that journalists have of framing certain things in certain ways uh, because they come from certain regions, so yeah.